Hey guys, what's up? It's Uncle Zunky, and welcome to my Chaos Dwarf AFK 3 mil an hour profit guide. There are a few things that we need to go over before we start into the method of how to kill the Chaos Dwarves and the Chaos Dwogers. And first of that, of all of those we're going to go over is the requirements. First of all, to access the area, you need to have completed the quest Forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf, in which you forgive a very angry Chaos Dwarf for wronging you in the past. And also, you need to have completed the quest Desert Treasure to kill them effectively. So what we're going to be using is the method Ice Burst. Um, you can also use Ice Barrage if you'd like. You kill them a little bit faster, but it costs a lot more, since Blood Runes are much more expensive than Death Runes. Also, you can cast Ice Burst at only level 70 magic, and... Ice Barrage needs level 94 magic. Also keep in mind that this is very AFK, um, so you're not going to be paying too close of attention. So you're not going to be getting a whole lot of kills, as, as many kills per hour um, with either of these two as you were if you were paying attention and uh, being very careful in your method of how you attack the creatures and making sure you're killing them as fast as possible. But the entire appeal of this method is because it is AFK. So, going over the inventory and gear setup that I have, first of all, for the inventory, you need a Bone Crusher to be effective here. If you don't have one, um, that's fine. Just bring an inventory full of prayer potions, and it'll work almost as well. Um, some death runes and some water runes. You're going to want a lot more death runes than I have here, but that's just what I had in my bank. I have a Charming Imp here to collect charms, um, a Tuckalzo to teleport out. I brought a Yak and some Yak Scrolls in a gem bag. Um, bring those because you will get quite a few gems here, and also just to bank various herbs and stuff, you can use your Pack Yak. And then in my, for my gear setup, I'm wearing War Priest with Ragefire Boots, Six Age Circuit. You can swap that out for a Sears Ring or War Priest Boots even. Um, Chaotic Staff, if you don't have that, bring a Staff of Light. A demon horn necklace, very, very recommended, and a max cape. If you don't have that, bring a skill cape. So how we get there is you just go to the Grand Exchange, and you will find that um, there is a secret trap door in the Grand Exchange that will bring you right to the Dwarven area, which is very, very handy. So you just want to go over to this trap door and go quick travel, Kelgrim trap door. Um, you do not want to do the slow travel, as it is slower, so always do the quick travel. And this will bring you to Keldegrim, and unfortunately is a little bit of a walk. Um, that's why you want to make sure that you have that Demon Horn necklace and the Bone Crusher, because that means you will hardly ever have to bank. You can stay here for hours um, if you have a large amount of death and water runes, and you can just use Soul Split to heal your uh, health back. Again, um, if you don't have Soul Split, you can still use the Bone Crusher and Demon Horn necklace, um, but instead of praying Soul Split, you can just pray protect from range or protect from magic depending on what armor you're using on uh, which one will damage you more um, and then you can also use magic boosting prayers such as the ones from the regular spell book or augury or even if you have the turmoil spells unlocked you can use um, torments to boost your magic damage a little bit um, I also did not bother to bring uh, extreme magic potions just because it you can bring them if you want. You can bring either super magic potions, extreme magic potions, or even overloads, though I wouldn't recommend overloads. Um, you can, but they won't help out your damage by a whole lot, again, because you're AFK. And also, um, they just take up inventory space, and that kind of defeats the purpose of one of the best things about this place, is you can just camp for a very, very long time. Um, so that's why I'd recommend to not bring any of those kind of potions. Um, so I went the wrong way, but what you're going to want to... What well, what you are going to want to do is go down to this second bridge here, where I am running. And if you have done the quest forgiveness to a chaos chaos dwarf, you have done this, uh, gone to this area before. And if you remember the quest, like I clearly don't, then you'll be able to find your way there quite easily. Um, again, if you do not have the soul split unlocked, uh, make sure to, instead of bring a yak to bring a unicorn stallion pouch or a bunyip with some food in your inventory. Uh, just keep in mind that these monsters do not hit very hard, so there's not too much to worry about. Okay, so now that we're here, um, we're just going to pop the soul split on and begin attacking the monsters. And, um, yeah, you just uh, stand back, make sure your auto-retaliate is on, and just let uh, your ice barrage and your soul split do all the work. Um, and these monsters will attack you after a while. They're all kind of focused on killing the other dwarves right now. Um, but after a while, they you will gain their attention, and they will begin attacking you. As you can see, this hand cannon right here is attacking me, um, and this hand cannon right here is attacking me. So your character will just automatically switch from between monsters and begin attacking the hand cannoneers. 
They are not weak to magic, however, they are only level 100, which means they have a very low defense. And as you can see, my staff is hitting quite hard. Um, it's hitting over a thousand per hit uh, for the most part and you might be saying wouldn't it be better to use a wand and book here um, that might seem like the case but the problem with the wand and book is it hits about twice as fast as the staff does however it also hits about half as hard um, the wand and book do not hit very hard at all um, for the most part if you're using a wand and book to auto cast ancients uh, you will be hitting like 300s and 400 hits a lot um, so you won't be dealing a whole lot of damage per hit and you save a lot more runes using this method but anyway I'm just gonna kill a few and kind of show you guys a few of the drops you can expect here alright so I killed a few chaos monsters just to test out the XP rates there so the XP rate isn't great it's about 120 to about 140 K magic per hour um, so you're not going to be getting amazing XP or anything. And these are just a few of the drops that, none of the dragon pickaxes or anything, of course, but just a few of the normal drops. This is what you can expect to get about every 15 minutes or so. Um, so about 800k an hour just from the normal drops. Of course, if you don't have a yak, you won't be able to bank the mithril bars and muddy keys. However, just make sure to pick up all the hand cans and hand cannon shots because they can add up to be a fair amount. But anyway, um, not very good with the charms either. They do drop a lot of gold, so not a whole lot else. So we're going to end up this uh, video the right way by drinking this, and the screen starts shaking. I don't know if any of you guys knew this, but every time you drink a beer, your screen shakes for a little bit, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it helped, and farewell.